Hello, everybody, and welcome to the July 10th, 2018 edition, or the 50th episode of the Ephraim Joe Scene Show. And I, like always, am your host, Ephraim Joe Scene. Anyway, as announced in the June Roundup, this is going to be the final episode of the Ephraim Joe Scene Show on the Ephraim Josine channel. From here on out, all episodes of the Ephraim Josine show will be uploaded exclusively to the Ephraim Report YouTube channel, which there is a link to in the description of all of my videos since about episode 47 or so. You can, mind you, also read the Ephraim Report blog at EphraimJosine.blogspot.com and follow me on Twitter at at EphraimJosine1 for updates and for random thoughts. Now, the original plan for this episode was going to be to talk about Donald Trump's new Supreme Court pick, Brett, I cannot pronounce that last name for the life of me. However, I'm doing that already at EphraimJosine.blogspot.com in a column that will be published tonight. Um, and by the way, from now on when I'm speaking, he shall be known as Brett, the guy with the last name that is impossible to pronounce. So instead, let's just talk about some of the reactions to him from conservative Twitter. Most notably, complaining that liberal Twitter was angry because, as we all know, whenever Obama tried to appoint a Supreme Court justice, Republicans were all nice about and just sort of let him. I'm going to cut away before I burst out laughing now. Here's what that weird guy, you know, educating liberals, the one who honestly looks like more of a hippie than any liberal I've seen in recent years, had to say. Bernie Sanders, okay, just the first thing, Bernie Sanders, he said it, um, Bernie Sanders says, we must mobilize the American people to defeat Trump's right-wing nominee. How is nominating a judge who interprets the law based on the written word of the Constitution a bad thing? This is the lie they are going to spread. As NPR reported, um, Brett, the guy with the last name you just can't pronounce, said that he also interprets the spirit of the law. Now let me tell you what the spirit of the law means. The spirit of the law basically means it means whatever I want it to mean. The spirit of the law is not a thing that actually exists according to any lawyer except the Supreme Court justice trying to win a case in favor of a corporation. That's typically the only time it exists. Okay, guys, I'm actually really happy right now. I think um, the people over at Louder with Crowder actually know it's the 50th episode of my show. Because I was going to go over there, and I was going to say, oh, they have two articles on Brett. Um, whatever, the guy with the last name you just can't pronounce. And none of them actually talk about him. However, and I'm happy for this. Oh, boy, am I happy. This is the article. They must have just published this a few hours ago, too, because I checked there, like, earlier today. This wasn't published. Leftists freaking over Brett, the guy with the last name you just can't pronounce. Seriously, I just can't pronounce it. Kavanaugh? Kav Khrushchevic? Is he a communist? Oh, my God, we appointed a communist. This proves the Russian collusion right there. Accidentally prove a conservative's point, and guess who wrote it? Courtney Khrushchev. Now, if you've never seen the show, this is like your first episode ever. I have a history with Courtney Khrushchev. I don't like her very much. Uh, I haven't actually read this. I just found out about this article. We've been recording for four minutes. I just found out about this article in between takes probably less than four minutes ago. I have not read this yet. These could be the best points in the world. We're going to find out together. Um, this is the first paragraph. It didn't matter who Trump picked to fail the vacancy 
to fill the vacancy on the Supreme Court. The issue for the left was that Trump got to fill it with someone who wasn't making daily libations, libations to their god, abortion. I can tell she's buddies with Matt Walsh. Trump could have nominated a gender-fluid, non-binary black woman, sometimes man, who identifies on Saturday as Ricky Ricardo. Ricky Ricardo would be a great Supreme Court justice. I'm just saying. We need to... Although, he died, like, 32 years ago. So, that'd be kind of pointless. Because then he'd see it would be immediately failed, but still... No, he was one of the first sitcom actors. He's an immigrant right there. Legal immigrant, might I add. So you guys should love him. At least his actor was. I just realized I'm looking at his actor's Wikipedia page and not the character. I didn't think this out all the way through, okay? Had that nominee believed life begins at conception, Zer would have been out of popularity pool faster than she could sing Bambaloo. Yeah. Because we aren't very interested in identity politics anymore, Courtney. As someone on the left, I care about policy. See also why I did not support Ben Carson back in 2016. And here is just Courtney being Courtney, where she writes something long that she thinks is clever, but really isn't. But a more important point needs to be made. Yes, tell us. The left is flipping itself into a rejected pretzel over one position on one branch of government. These are the same people who just made long posts about how elections matter, and this is why you need to vote Republican. What do you think the president is? One position in one branch of government. Yes, yes, if Hillary had swept her way into La Casablanca, those of us on the right would be in a panic for the very same reason. Except conservatives have always lamped the power grabs of government. How government seems to be gobbling up even more power. Wrestling it away from the American people election cycle by election cycle. Eroding our personal liberties. I'm just going to stare at you for about five seconds until you get the irony. Get it? You never will. While insisting everyone has a right to their own version of reality, which government officials said that? Um, unless your version of reality values the Constitution, the same Constitution that we have determined does not give federal, state, or local governments the right to regulate abortion. The left throwing itself down to slam its fist on the daycare floor is a tantrimonian tantamount, sorry, a mission, they believe the same thing we do. The Supreme Court has too much power. I'm going to read these two back to back. Unless your version of reality value the Constitution, the Supreme Court has too much power. There's kind of a contradiction there. The Supreme Court has not expanded its power. It's always had the same amount of power. The only thing the Supreme Court can really do, honestly, is grant power to other people. It's determined it can, for instance, grant the power to make people buy health care or pay a tax penalty. It is determined it does not have the power for states to limit who can get married. Things like that. But... Okay, so essentially, what I'm asking Courtney is, why do you hate the Constitution? If we zoom out and look at the bigger picture, the left's tissy fit over Brett being nominated is an accidental omission. Government at large has too much power. With one caveat, of course, the left doesn't mind all the power so long as they're the ones wielding it.
she's on to us. As Harry Reid can attest, thanks to his now infamous nuclear option. And then she just goes into soccer for some reason. It's World Cup time, so pardon my awkward scourge into soccer. Uh, I don't think Michael Nolis is going to like this article. I bolded, underlined, and italicized that word for a reason, yet she did that to awkward. Brace yourself, and yes, soccer, it's what we American. The Supreme Court has become a line of goalies, either letting a law through for a goal or stopping it and sending it back down the field, or pitch to your Europeans we saved from Hitler. Yeah, that's what they were originally intended to do. Except before the ball makes it to the goalie, or maybe that's keeper to people who roll their R's, it has to go through or be stopped by everyone else on the team. Here's where my soccer analogy collapses in on itself like a trans woman athlete at a meet. Watch it later. The United States government is not made up of skilled athletes who train to make their team proud. Well, actually, if you consider the team to be a political party, then that's exactly what Republicans are supposed to do. So, we're halfway there. Instead, our government is full of self-important windbags who care less about team pride, uh, of about making their audience happy, and more concerned about controlling the revenue for all of time. Because people in soccer never care about... What? While pushing their own version of the game on everyone else. Imagine the residents of an old farts home running around the soccer field flapping papers and not kicking one ball but hundreds while the crowd team boos. That'd actually be a pretty interesting game right there. Just a hundred <laughs> soccer balls? <laughs> she then goes on and continues the analogy to soccer and just sort of complains that big government is doing something. I don't know what. But something. That's it. I'm Ephraim and good night.